Welcome to Politics Unplugged. I'm Andrew Heo. Facebook is now in the process of telling more than a quarter of a million users that they were following at least one of 32 pages that were likely run by Russians trying to meddle in U.S. politics. All of those pages have been shut down by the social media giant. Facebook calls it inauthentic behavior. And though Facebook can't be sure, it sure looks like Russia again. 32 pages with names including Black Elevation, Resistors, Aslan Warriors, being followed by 290,000 accounts. The fake accounts also setting up and promoting real events and protests aimed at further polarizing U.S. political discourse. Many of the events did occur, including this one last year in New York City, attended by people who likely had no idea the resistors' Facebook page was probably run by Russians. Another event by the same group was supposed to take place in just a few days. Resistors setting up a counter-protest against white supremacists at the White House this coming Friday. Five other real groups had signed on to participate. Just as Facebook was announcing its crackdown on these sites, the U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security was at a cybersecurity conference saying there is no doubt Russia meddled in the 2016 election. Everyone and everything is now a target. And Russian actors may be at it again comparing the upcoming midterm elections to a looming storm. Today, I believe the next major attack is more likely to reach us online than on an airplane. We are in a crisis mode. The Cat 5 hurricane has been forecast, and now we must prepare. Facebook says these current pages, all shut down, have all the hallmarks of the activities the Russians did around the presidential election, though there are some differences. This time, the pages didn't lead back to Russian IP addresses, and they used third-party services to buy ads to boost their posts and encourage people to follow the pages. And joining us now to talk about this are Brian Keegan, an assistant professor of information science at CU Boulder, and Blair Miller of the DenverChannel.com. So thank you, gentlemen, first for being here. Mm -hmm. All right, when we hear about 32 pages being shut down, that actually doesn't sound like very many. I mean, it doesn't sound like many, but I mean, I think this is just kind of the a, a sign to everyone that, hey, this stuff that has been going on for a couple, three, four years now is still going on, just as they've hinted at, but now we know for sure. Yeah, it sounds like 32 accounts. Like, a lot of us have a lot more friends than 32 uh, accounts, yeah, exactly. but, uh, and so the fact that 32 accounts were banned out of Facebook's 2.2 billion users sounds like a small drop in the ocean, but Facebook also released this information about 290,000 people were following these accounts and engaged in that. That was really just only one step removed, right? That was just one handshake away from these accounts. And so you can imagine that content could then spread from that quarter million people to all their friends and so on, and how a lot of this virality works these days. And so in reality, how fast are these threats happening? I mean, 32 is, again, a drop in the bucket. So is this endless? I mean, I think the election uh, security people, some of the defense people in the government have said, you know, I mean, kind of that this is really easy to do. I mean, really, I think this that's why they've kind of put the onus on Facebook and some of these other tech companies. because It's easy to set up these accounts. Yeah, because, I mean, all you need is an email address, essentially. Yeah. So, I mean, you can spoof as much information and stuff as you want. And I think that makes it a little harder for whoever's tracking this, whether it be the government or the companies themselves, to figure out who's behind some of this stuff. I think one thing that was interesting about the particular identities of the accounts that were banned this time was that they weren't sort of overtly political or partisan sorts of groups. Right. You had these Azalan warriors, which is sort of like this Latino group, this black elevation, this mindful being, which is like this new age group. Uh, this resistance. So in some ways, they were all like different kinds of like stereotypes that like people might have about sorts of extremes of people on the left or something like that. But you see in this way that it's it's almost like the second order thinking that like we're not going to be pro-Trump or anti-Hillary or something like that. It's, it's trying to sow more fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and make you not trust your other citizens. Yeah, I was like going that. to ask, what does that say to you that it is those? Uh, it is clearly minority groups that were that were misrepresented here. Yeah, I think to me, I mean, the, this has been part of the ongoing thing since 2016. I mean, it's really been, the, as the government said, it's to sow discord within just America in general. So I think this is part of it. You know, we focus so much on, oh, did Russia help Trump? But that was just one facet of the whole meddling in 2016. Mm -hmm. Really, it's just to divide America. And I think we see that that's still going on, which is why I think they're considering these hallmarks to be really significant of what Russia had done, even though they're saying that there's other countries that might be involved this time around. Sure. I think one thing you have to keep in mind, too, is that these attacks are like unfolding at like at least three different kinds of levels. That You've got sort of them hacking the platform itself, creating these fake accounts, 
uh, getting people to follow them and spreading information on that. Uh, but they're also creating content that is sort of very sort of outrageous or gets or is poised to like go viral. And so in some ways, they're also hacking institutions like journalists to say like if we can get enough attention and enough like fires burning, then like of course people want to go and start talking about these. Mm -hmm. So you get that message amplification happening as well as more and more uh, of these ridiculous content gets out there, more people have to cover that as well. So you get the amplifications, so they're hacking professions. Sure. And they're also hacking our psychology, right? So they're trying to like tap into these really deeply held things about what makes us angry, makes us happy, what sorts of is compatible with how we feel about certain kinds of issues. And so on all these different levels are tapping into like these really complex sure. assembly of like the platform, the technology, the professions, and like our own psychology. So when you say they, who could it be? I mean, I know we, we always talk about the Russians right now, but who else could it be? I mean, in theory, it could be anyone. I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if even the Americans were doing this in other places, you know? I think that this sort of new cyber espionage stuff is the whole new ballgame for, you know, spies and for governments and for non-governments alike to just, because they see how easy it is to access such a wide group of people that I think if you're in any of those, you know, sectors, whether it be spies or business even, you know, I think you're taking a look at this kind of stuff. What do yeah. you think, Brian? I mean, I think that, yeah, the, the costs of like doing this kind of activity are extremely low. If, if you're thinking about how do you like take on a trillion dollar military like the U.S. and like you can achieve your same strategic objectives with a million dollars in ads and bots on Facebook, that's like a, a million time return on your investment or something like that. And so I think that there are really profound vulnerabilities that these platforms uh, have and that they introduce and how pervasive they are it introduces lots of vulnerabilities to our election security and many other kinds of parts sure. of our society. So who who does this fall on then? Is it is it Facebook and these other entities or is it our government? Is it our intelligence that should be? Well, I, I think mean, that, it, I, I thought it was interesting this week that uh, the members of Congress who spoke about this kind of still it put it on the tech companies and even on you know us in the media uh, to you know sort of dispel what some of these you know fake accounts fake uh, elevated stories are coming up but uh, as he said you know what you have to draw the line somewhere between elevating something that's totally false and making people aware of that and so if Congress isn't doing anything about it if the government is still figuring out what it's doing you know, I guess for now it, it's on the tech companies, but we haven't seen the best response from them right, either. So right. I think that's kind of the big question now, really. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of impetus on like putting the responsibility on the users. So like say you should be skeptical, you should sure. always be like checking your sources and things like that. But a lot of us just want to like scroll through our Facebook feeds and, and have it be we like this very passive. want to see puppies, right? Exactly. Puppies and kittens. <laughs> but so we have to think about like the governance of like these platforms as well. And so in the absence of there being uh, strong norms or strong regulations about how and what kinds of content can share, can be shared on these platforms, like who gets to make the rules about the kinds of content can be on these platforms? How do we decide what gets taken down and under what sorts of circumstances? Who gets to make those rules? There's just not a lot of clarity about that right well, now. Well, and right? it doesn't seem to be happening quickly enough, right? No, I mean, we've seen the latest example with Facebook, at least, it's been the Alex Jones stuff, where they took down a handful of his videos that were laden with conspiracy theories, but they're saying, oh, we're not the First Amendment police. Well, the First Amendment is not having anything to do with a private corporation, but this is the sort of discussion that's going on now just with somebody who's obviously making up conspiracy theories, much less someone who's planting secret threats within you know Facebook's infrastructure. All right, well, I guess we will just wait and watch and see what happens with this ever-changing scenery. Professor Brian Keegan, Blair Miller, thank you both. Mm -hmm. Be right back. You.